Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to man on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Shelter. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Please be very careful. We have not even diced the vegetables yet. You already almost lost your thumb two times. It's okay. As soon as we're done with that, the rest will be safe, right? I sure hope so. Eh. Eh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, nice art. Excellent. Thumbnail material right there, baby. The familiar sounds of frying food can be heard, and a sweet scent fills the kitchen. We finally begin the actual cooking. Burry uses a gigant gigantic pot. His prepared ingredients pile up much higher than mine. Let's hope that that will be enough to feed everyone tomorrow. I use a relatively big pot, too, roughly 7 liters in volume. And Burry said I could probably do with a smaller one, but it's better to use too big of a pot than too little for this recipe. Look at the big fluffy pot. Big, I look at the big fluffy dog stirring the contents of his gigantic cauldron, and I, get a pretty, and I get ready to start with mine. By his instruction, I put the butter into my pot and stare at it as it liquefies slowly. So, with the burner set on medium heat, let the butter melt. Once it is nice and hot, add your, slide, add your diced celery stick and carrots. And carrot. <laughs> the butter is all liquid now. Is it hot enough? Throw in a single piece and observe if it sizzles. I nod, throw in a tiny green cube of celery on top of the thin layer of melted butter. It just lays there. No, it doesn't. Then wait a moment. Add your ingredients when it does. Got it. I wait patiently, awaiting the first signs of sizzling around the green little cube swimming in butter. Once it starts bubbling and shaking, I add the rest of the diced celery and carrot into the pot. The moment I do, I get wafted with the scent of sweet, sweet from my own pot. Man, it already smells nice, and it's only the veggies. It shall only keep growing more enticing the further this path would venture. Remember to stir it, do not let them burn. Crap, I haven't grabbed my spatula yet. Find one of the big sp wooden spoons. Please do not use metal or silicone. I rush toward the drawers and start brushing through their contents in search of a wooden spatula or a big spoon. I find them in the drawer right under where I cut my onion before. And most of the tools are there destroyed, cut into pieces. Apparently the magic knife caused much more damage than we initially thought. All the wooden silicone tools in that drawer are sliced and impossible to use anymore. Barry will have to buy more at Morseburg tomorrow. One second, y'all. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. I'm back. I had to take my uh, mate back to work. Anyway, y'all. Right back into it. Okay. However, there's still a nice, a nice big, nice-looking metal spoon. All scratched, but fully functional. I know that I was asked to find a wooden spoon, but there's no other choice right now. I grab it and run back to my pot in a hurry, determined not to burn anything this time. I start stirring the vegetables and see that some of them started to get some more, get more translucent. I let out their juices and make the rising vapor smell richer. The metal spoon works just fine. I don't know why Burry was so specific about not using metal. Every single other tool we use is metal. We both seem to be ready to add our onions and garlic. If you think it smells good now, prepare yourself to be impressed yet again. Let us do it together, Luke. Okay, I'm ready here. And... Both of us push our diced onion and garlic mix into our respective pots and stir it together with the other vegetables. In a matter of seconds, the air completely turns from smelling enticing to borderline mouth-watering. Buttery, butter, celery, carrot, onion, and garlic create such a smooth and rich bouquet of aromas. Mmm. This is getting really good! Haha, <laughs> yeah! The scent is your first little reward for the job well done! This is, But this is only the beginning. Soon we will get to the first reveal! The first real challenge! And by that you mean... The meat! Yay, the meat! I shall walk you through it very soon. For now, let us finish with the vegetables. Cook them until the onion starts getting translucent. Garlic easily burns if you're not careful, so keep stirring. If it's too hot, lower the temperature. Barry keeps giving me numerous small advice as we complete preparing the as we complete preparing the buttery the buttery vegetable mix. Then we move then we move them to the separate bowls and set them aside. We will add it much later when the meat is ready. We are going to cook the meat in the same pots as we did the vegetables in. Less stuff to less, less stuff to wash later. Second like, you know. Exactly. So the meat now. Indeed. I refrain from preparing the meat in advance because it tastes the best when freshly minced before cooking. However, it will still taste good even if you let it rest some time after mincing, even the next day. 
Just be sure to never make it out of frozen meat because the flavor difference is very noticeable. Luckily for us, we do not have that much problem without, with getting fresh meat. Indeed. We grow our own. I have a few plump ones here, freshly picked from our trees, still warm. Murray pulls out a big chunk of meat from the fridge. Oh god, that looks horrifying. And puts it on the counter. It's about as long as my forearm and looks absolutely terrific. Beautiful. Uh, I guess if you say so. It's like the other food, the meat is grown in our- Oh, okay. It's grown in our local gardens. A few meat trees? What? No! Oh, God! What the fuck? I mean, I guess if it's fine. God, it's so creepy looking. It looks like a fucking tumor. It's not a- it's not a tumor. I have a few meat trees that Burry personally takes care of. That effort clearly reflects in the quality of his harvests. All the vegetables grown at shelter taste great, but the meat grown on our soil is especially high quality, and some say that it rivals the best that the canine country has to offer. Oh man, that sure is delicious looking, delicious looking thick piece of meat if I've ever seen one. Yes, real beauty. I could just sink my teeth into it right now. The smell is irresistible. But even though a canine knows, you can still tell a lot about the quality of the meat from how soft and lustrous the fur is. This one was at its peak day for a harvest. Why does it have fur? Oh god, I, oh, I'm so repulsed, but I want to know so much about these trees. Like, how is this a thing? How is this possible? Why is there fur on it? Oh god, there's a vein! <laughs> it's so gross. Oh god, it's like a Binding of Isaac item, holy shit. Sometimes, sometimes I wish I could eat raw meat like you guys. It's okay, Luke, as much as I love raw meat, its true potential is yet still to be unlocked by, by us through cooking. You'll see. So, are you gonna teach me how to prepare it now? Is it okay if you just observe today? Are you worried that I could cut myself again? Yes, that too. Sure, I'll watch. It is not that I lack faith in you. I'm only mindful of your current exhaustion and... You know, you can sometimes act a bit weird when it comes to raw meat. It's not that bad anymore. One day I'd just uh, man up and be able to do it with my own hands. But you're right, Murray. I know it's hard skill to master, so it's better if I learn from observation for now. Especially since the knives for meat preparation look much sharper than anything else in your arsenal. Oh, their sharpness is in fact something that makes them safer to use. It keeps your cuts smooth and steady. There's nothing more dangerous in butchery than a worn-out knife. But first, you need to know where to sink the blade in the first place. Barry grabs a small knife and uses his other hand to pinch some of the skin at the side. There are a few ways to skin the meat. What I like to do is grab the uh, grab at this spot here where the skin is the loosest. You make a small cut. You just enough to put a few of your fingers into that socket between the skin and the flesh. Now, with both of your hands, grab the skin really hard and pull apart with all your strength. As Burry moves his hands apart, the skin, the skin rips and folds, exposing the red flesh underneath. I can also see the white of some bones. The dog adds a couple more small cuts and completely separates the skin from the meat. It gets put aside with a wet splotch, and I can clearly see the fat in the veins of its underside. Then Burry grabs a bigger knife with a strong swoop. He cuts off the remaining stem at the top, along with a bit of a bone. I observe his work with full attention, but I can't help but cringe at the times. For some reason, seeing skin and meat being cut and torn apart makes me uncomfortable. Second, no. The feeling only grows stronger as I keep watching and I start to feel a bit lightheaded. But I won't look away. I have to ignore the, the weird, that weird phobia if I want to be able to be more helpful to Burry. We are going to mince it, so do not worry yourself about cutting the meat perfectly. You simply have to make sure you do bone as much as you can. You look for the bones first. This one seems to have grown to two or three. You choose one. You get to the side and you simply cut off the slabs of meat with your knife by the bone. Always cut away from your hand, never towards it. That is something you really need to take to heart, Luke. You probably cut your thumb earlier while working on the celery because you sliced towards your hand, huh? L Luke? Mm hmm Your face is very pale. Are you sure you're okay? I just... I, I will... I turn around and look away as I feel my mouth quickly salivating, like if I were getting very close to puking. I take a deep breath and control myself, though. I just stand like that for a while and look at the wall. I'm sorry, Luke. I should have prepared it in advance, after all. No, I'm sorry. Please, continue. I just won't look for now. Okay. I hear a quiet sigh, and the sounds of slicing continue. Then, they stop again. You know, I feel slightly guilty to think that way, but to me it is somehow adorable how you react to preparation of meat. I've never seen anyone react like that. Your mind does not even waver in actual combat, with actual wounds and spilled blood, as much as it does right now. To me, it is very cute that you feel upset about cutting meat. 
Be mindful that meat, just like onion or celery, doesn't live and it cannot feel. It has no brain. It's just flesh, skin, and bones. Food grows slowly for us to consume it. I know, I don't know why I react like that. I just have to stop being a wuss. Oh no, Luke, I find it way more adorable. But you are certainly, but you certainly are not a wuss. A wet, slimy hand plops on my, plops on my head and pets through my fur. I turn my head and stare at Burry's smiling face. You're the strongest person I know. And then he puked. Because that was gross. Following the same advice I used when frying the vegetables, I test the hotness of the oil before I put all the minced meat into the pot. The sounds of cooking play loudly across the kitchen, but the smell isn't as instantly gratifying as the mix of butter and vegetables was. Aside, aside from the flavor, the reason they were using oil to fry the meat is because it can reach higher temperatures. We're going to keep the heat cranked up to the max until all the meat is fried. That's a lot of heat! Indeed! This is the second most tiring phase of this recipe. You have to make sure that the meat doesn't burn and that will require a lot of constant mixing over the steaming hot stove. But not just yet. For now, add some salt and a generous amount of black pepper into the pot. Mix it and let it rest. It's so full of juices right now that it will take quite a while before it evaporates and gets to properly cook. Oh yeah, you're right. It's letting out a lot of water. Can't I just pour that water out into the sink and speed it up? Absolutely not! That is where all the flavor is. If we let the moisture evaporate, the flavor will stay concentrated in the pot. But we would lose it if we got rid of all the liquids. Be patient. I promise you it'll be worth it. I nod to Burry and grab my salt and pepper grinder to spice up the meat and I, give it a, and I give it a thorough mix. I see that Burry left his pot uncovered, so I do the same. I also see that he placed his wooden spoon on top of the edge of the, on top of the, edge of the pot, so I do the same with my metal one. We probably won't need to be using our spoons for a while. Right now it's simmering rather than frying. Burry is starting to staring silently around the kitchen, so I guess right now we just wait. Maybe I should break the silence and talk about something. Talk about Burry. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about you. Yeah, hot stuff. Let's talk about you. Hey, Burry? Hmm? How old are you exactly? How old are you exactly? Burry slowly turns his head and looks at me with amusement. Have I really never told you? I don't think so. That's so weird, come to think of it. Both of us stand and think quietly for a while, trying hard to recall if we ever have really shared each other's age. Finally, Burry starts laughing. <laughs> Apparently, that was never any concern to us. Personally, I find that beautiful. We have grown close regardless of any potential difference in age or lack thereof. Time is it? Okay. That is a sign of truly strong friendship. Yeah, totally. I won't be able to rest until I know now, though. How old are you, Burry? I can go. How old do you think I am? Uh, come on, that's always a weird question to answer. As it should be awkward to inquire into such matters. Do not worry, just save your, say your estimate. I'm simply curious. How old do you think Burry is? I would say 35. 35? Close, very close. I'm in my 30s, yes, just a little younger than that. Honestly, it's worthy you would call for late 40s or early 50s. <laughs> nah, I know you well enough to say for sure that you aren't that old yet. Can I have another try? Sure, why not? Just don't forget about your meat. Even now, give it a stir every few minutes. Murray smiles and grabs his big wooden spoon from the edge of his pot to mix the meat, and I can see thick steam rises from the high temperature. It's so hot! I nod and return my attention to my own stove to do the same. In the corner of my eye, I can only barely, only barely notice panic rapidly growing on Burry's face as my hand reaches for my big metal spoon that I left... <coughs> oh, goodness, Jesus. Oof. That was sudden. Painful. That I left on the edge of my pot. Oh, when I grab the spoon, a tremendous burning pain eats into my hand as if I grab burning coals. It drops to the floor with a loud clunk. When I clutch my hand with a hiss of pain, Barry quickly turns the stove off, stoves off and grabs me by the collar of my shirt to guide me to the sink. He turns on the tap water with coal and puts my hand there, but there to be washed in cold. Open your hand! Let the cool water wash over it! It takes me some effort to force my fist open. I do my best to not let out to let out any any sort of any more noises to not worry Burry even further, but it hurts so much. I'm so so sorry, Luke. It is my fault, did I notice sooner? I should have told you to use a wooden spoon. You told me, you did, but we didn't have any wooden tools around and I was in a hurry. You should have let me know, I would have found you one or given you mine. It's so easy to get hurt with improper tools and one's focus wavers. It's okay, I've survived worse, it doesn't even hurt that much. Ah, it hurts a lot, when I look at it I can see blisters. Just stay here and keep your head running, uh, under running water. I will grab the bandages, again. We're already halfway through, Luke, please don't lose your life for this. I promises.
All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.